beautifuls and welcome back to Deuce Me, the Tommy game. Last episode, Diana came by and she told me I cannot sleep. The boys, the Prince Charmings, cannot no longer. They can't be by my side no more. That, that's what I'm trying to say. So she's come to take them back to their abyss world. But I forgot the words. So, yeah. I'm quite sad. <gasps> Such control you have, human. You know your place very well. Shut the hell up, my Diana. I didn't control the growl that escaped my throat, however. Well, will you all change your minds? I assure you, it's for the greater good. I expected the boys to say no. What I heard was complete silence. None of the boys replied to Diana, which made me both nervous and fearful as to why. Diana leaned her back leaned her head back a bit, surprised for a different reason. No. Well, I see. Was silence truly them saying no to her? I looked around at the boys and saw the disobedience in their eyes, giving me my answer. I felt my heart flutter, especially when my eyes landed on Damien. He kept close to me, glaring daggers into Diana. I could feel that he was completely ad adamant in his choices today. I don't know what, but I was incredibly happy to know he wanted to stay. Diana sighed and pressed a finger into her temple, rubbing it gently. Either all of you are playing a very convincing hard-to-get game, or you all must be out of your minds. Diana then looked to me, locking her gaze with mine as if to read me. I could tell she wanted to do something, but the voice would stop her, so the stare was her only available action. After a small moment of silence, Diana licked her lips before the before breaking the case battle and spying to the boys around me. Very well. I guess I'll take my leave now. What? Her leave? Was she serious? The boys around me straightened up and grew confused and grew confused looks on their faces. As Diana stepped back and away from us with a small bow, watching her cleavage. Without another word, a deep purple pentagram appeared under her feet and Diana's body slowly sank into the floor. As it, her head vanished into the floor, the pentagram was vanished. And once the boys relaxed and slowly began to return their, to their spots at the table, each in deep thought. She'll be back, but she won't kill us. She needs us alive. Whatever. We'll just keep saying no! She can't force us to come back! She can't do anything but annoy us. Eventually she'll give up. That's the hope, anyway. Hopefully. Damien walked over to me and stood before me, looking at me with concern. We'll protect you. Don't worry. I nodded, feeling that he was telling the truth, or at least a hopeful and comforting thought. Damien gently took my hand in his and brought it up to kiss my knuckles, however making me blush and forgetting what I was thinking about. The sound of collective chuckles and playful snickers whispered through the air, making me blush even more. But as Damien sighed and cleared his throat, the laughter stopped. I looked up to see he was glaring at his brothers with his lips on my hand. He, he and I pulled away from each other just as the sound of Naomi's car appeared. I quickly ate my food, said bye to the boys, and left, confident that nothing was going to happen. Never ever say that nothing will happen before the day is over. I avoided talking about the ride back home yesterday, saying that the ride was a one-time thing. I'll be riding with you guys from now on to school, to and from school. The girls seemed very happy as we entered the school, quickly gathered our things from our lockers and headed to class. There was no events to our surprise. Our story wasn't exactly fun, but our teacher was great. At least it would have been great if he was in class that day. Naomi and Suzu took their seats around me, Suzu in front of me and Naomi beside me, before the class bell rang and the class was greeted by the dean. Students, you'll be having a substitute for class today. Everyone meet. Miss Diana. Oh my god. My heart stopped. At the door was a dean. At the door with the dean was Diana, looking over the students and smirking as her eyes landed on me. She strutted to the teacher's desk, ignoring or welcoming whispers from the other students before sitting on the wood and crossing her legs. Thank you, Dean. You can go now. She manipulated the Dean. With a wave of Diana's hand, the Dean left the classroom, closed the door, and left the area. 
Diana smiled at us, making my stomach turn. What was she going to do? So, history. History, history, history. Such a silly thing, isn't it? I mean, what do we care about the past? We're in the present. The rest of the class, included, including Naomi and Suzu, hesitantly nodded in agreement, unsure about this new teacher, but willing to listen to more what she had to say. The present is so full of wonderful things. While the labors of the past are the reason we have many things, it is our chance and privilege to utilize what has been given to us. Her charm was almost infectious. The class was practically starting to eat out of her hand. I looked around to see classmates grinning and agreeing with Diana. I pressed my lips together as I listened further. I had no choice. What's even funnier about human beings is that some of the bits of history we hear as either made up or completely biased to one side. It's like a story you read as a child. You hear of the princess and the prince and they live happily ever after. But what about the family she left behind? What of her friends? The students listened and agreed intently to her words. I could tell, however, that these words were all targeted at me. The original story of the Little Mermaid, a perfect example of biased opinion. Here we have a girl who thinks she can be with this prince, but this prince has to marry a princess. A few, Damien is mine. What would happen if the mermaid had her way? What makes the mermaid so important that the princess has to suffer the consequences? Keep quiet. We're not stepping on her level. I kept my mouth shut. There was no way I was going to tell her. I was going to let her get to me. Despite her being the teacher, I, wasn't, I was going to ignore her. There was no telling what she could do if I talked back. Diana looked to me, expecting me to speak. But I merely stared at her. A smirk graced her face. A glare graced mine. But I didn't need to fight to win. It's still something to think about, however, as we think of this story. It's so easy to believe that the mermaid was the heroine. But what of the poor princess? Why should the princess suffer the antics of a mermaid? The princess didn't do anything wrong to her. More nonsense. I knew this was all of a subliminal message to me to make me pity her. My anger didn't allow any leeway to feel pity for her. How long was she planning to drag this out? She wasn't a real teacher. Okay, first of all, the princess can find another damn prince, okay? There's many princes out there in the sea. Diana continued to rave about the injustice the princess had to suffer through the while the mermaid was in the prince's sight. To Diana, it was injustice. To me, it was a fairy tale. The boys chose me. He chose me. She wasn't going to convince them otherwise, and I wasn't going to let her. Diana stretched her arms up, making an obvious sexual noise that made some of the boys in the class ship in their seats. I rolled my eyes. I hate girls like that. They use their body, because it's the only thing that I got. They don't have the brains or the personality. Oh my god. <sighs> well, that's enough about fairy tales. After all, the Little Mermaid was fated to lose her prince in the original story anyway. It was for the better, though. The kingdoms, I'm sure, flourished, and the prince and princess lived happily ever after. Not a word. I could tell that she was trying to pull me to speak more and more. I knew she was wrong, but I wasn't intimidated enough to fall for her words and speak up. I decided to just watch and observe from the remainder of her class. Her class had become a lecture and no one spoke as she spouted nonsense. Diana then stopped talking and looked at the clock on the wall. Reading it quickly, the class had barely begun. Why was she looking at the time? Diana then leaned against the blackboard and smiled to us. I began. I became worried. You know what? School isn't important. Everyone, go ahead and head home. Take the week off. The students suddenly began to chat happily or in confusion of the situation. Many thought it was a dream come true, others knew better. Before anyone could protest, however, Diana pressed a finger to her lips and counted down with her fingers in the air. Three, two, one. The speakers of the classroom gently awoke, giving us an announcement we would never believe. Attention students, due to an emergency faculty meeting, we will be closing school for the remainder of the day and this entire week. Please leave the school quickly and quietly and have a good rest of the week. She used her powers on them. Damn it. 
I felt the need to stop her, but how could I stop a demon in the middle of a public area? Diana smiled before gesturing to the door. Have a nice week off. School will resume next week. Many of the students followed out, chatting to each other about new impromptu plans. Suzu was beyond happy, but Naomi was hesitant. Before we could pack up and leave, however, Diana stepped to us. Excuse me, little miss. I'd like you to stay a little while. There's something we need to discuss. Frack. As Diana looked at Suzu and Naomi, she snapped her fingers, making my friends tense up. You two can head home. Don't worry about your friend until next week, okay? If you contact her, she won't reply, so don't bother. If she contacts you, ignore her, because she's just fine. Frack. As if on command, Suzu and Naomi left the room. I tried to march after them, but Diana stepped in my pathway, warning me with her eyes that if I followed, there would be hell to pay. I lost my two friends, at least for the week, as she wanted Diana and I were alone. I slammed my hands on the desk in front of me and glared at Diana. Why are you doing? What are you doing? And what are you thinking? What? Obviously Do I not make a good teacher? I figured you should have a little lesson, so I took matters into my own hands. Like it. Whatever you're trying to do won't work. You really think so, dear? Uh -huh. And what makes you so sure about that? What was making me so sure? Why was I confident? Were the boys worth it? My thoughts began to fill with doubt. All of the uncertainties about this whole ordeal began to cloud my mind. If the boys were found out, there'd be hell to pay. What was worth it? What about Diana? What would she do to me? Would she make my parents forget about me completely? Would she ruin my friends' lives out of spite? And I got, I felt a stone of confidence try to fight back, but the heaviness of my thoughts began to dissolve that stone little, little by little. What was going on with me? I looked up to Diana once again to see her gaze boring into my eyes. She was using her powers on me this time. I was away from home, so I couldn't escape. Or could I? Did I want to? The way she stared at me made me feel warm and fuzzy inside my chest. I felt like melting. Diana lifted a hand under my chin. Oh no. Get out. Get out of here. <laughs> under my chin and ran her thumb over my lips, flicking her own. I could feel little shoots of energy zipping from under my skin into my chin where she held me. This is bad. Now, let's have a little taste of that sweet... Virginal sexual energy. Excuse me. <laughs> I watched that she. If the storyline's going like this, what if. What would have happened if I did pursue further with Damien? I don't get it. I watched as she leaned in, ready to kiss me and take my energy. Half of my body felt ele elation at the idea, the other half completely rejected it and didn't want her to even touch me. D Damien. Suddenly, Diana stopped in her tracks. Damien? Who is... It then dawned on her. Ah, one of the boys. Why don't you tell me which boy is Damien? I felt myself nodded in compliance. But the youngest. Oh my god, Damien was the youngest? Diana giggled in reply before letting go of my face and stepping back. Really? The bastard son with you? I nodded once again, but this time partly in my own decision to reply. Diana let out a sound that mirrored a cat's purr before stepping back away from me. All right, then. Well, if it's the youngest son you're infatuated with... Diana chuckled before kissing my nose, where I felt a shot of energy zap out of my body, almost making me dizzy and recoil. Diana then turned to the desk and sound wood crossing her legs. You can go now. Remember... No class for the rest of the week. She's gonna hurt Damien. And how am I supposed to get home? My two friends left me here thanks to you. Oh, were they your ride? <laughs> My apologies. Let me help then. Diana then lifted her hand and snapped her fingers. I suddenly felt the floor sink from underneath me. Forcing me to look down, a purple pentagram surrounded my feet, pulling me into the ground. Whoa! Before I could fight how I sink fully into the floor, fading to darkness and shutting my eyes. As I opened them, I felt myself 
sheets around me, soothing my anxiety from the darkness that had previously surrounded me. What? What the? Why did Diana bring me home? Was this an illusion? Was I being tricked? Something was going on. I sat up in bed looking around me. I was indeed in my room. There was no mistake about that. Why? Diana is so too strange. Was this a game? Was this part of her plan to get the boys back? I was lost and confused more than ever, despite my logical thought of trying to piece the puzzle that is Diana together. The more I tried to solve her, the less I understood about the situation I was in. I was interrupted, however, by the door suddenly opening, filling the boys with Damien's hand on the doorknob. Miss, what are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be in school? <laughs> uh, I furrowed my eyebrows to stare at Damien, asking him to answer their questions through my thoughts. Diana sent her back here. She invaded her school and sent all the students back home. What is that bitch up to? Seriously! Diana's playing around for no reason! Maybe it's part of her plan. The boys continued to argue back and forth about Diana, feeling an almost jealous curiosity in me. Damien seemed to be deep within the talk, talking to not notice my thoughts, for he didn't even stop talking alongside his brothers. Why was Diana after them? Why did she want to bring them back? What was important about the boys that she would travel to the human world to get them? What's, what was going on? I decided enough was enough. I needed answers. Hey! The boys stopped arguing, staring at me in surprise. I held my hands and fist on my lap, mustering courage to continue to speak despite my abrupt shout. Why is Diana here? Why do you... <laughs> why does she want to bring you all back? What exactly did you all run from? Why did you run from it? Miss, we... I don't... <laughs> I can't even be serious right now. Don't miss me. Please, I need to know what is going on. I won't be left in the dark about this. I want to know what I'm facing. The boys looked at each other hesitantly, unsure of what to reply. Finally, Sam pushed Damien towards the bed, making him buckle and land on his knees with his torso over the edge of the mattress. Damien, do the thing. The thing? What thing? Sam, you're not suggesting. Why not? She deserves to know everything. Especially if Diana is targeting her. Sam's right. I guess we have no choice then. I was getting confused. What was Damien about to do? Damien stood before climbing onto the bed with me, sitting across from me on his knees. We're going to show you everything. You have to trust me, okay? The minute you stop trusting me, the vision will stop. This is some freaky dicky shiz. <laughs> vision? Just trust me. I looked at Damien and shared what was going on, but I nodded. If this was the way, only way to learn, then this was my chance to know. Damien gently placed his hand on each side of my head, gently pressing his thumbs into the skin above my eyebrows. I could only stare at Damien as his eyes began to glow gold, and Andrew began to be both pulled out of me and forced into my head. Within seconds, my vision went black once again. I wasn't sure of what, was, what Damien was doing. Soon, shapes and textures slowly began to appear around me. What? I found myself sitting on a stone floor in the middle of what looked like a fantasy throne room. Where am I? I looked down at myself to stand only to see my body as a translucent as a ghost. Whoa! I jumped up and inspected my hands in a sudden panic. I was see-through. Why? What was going on? How dare they try to negotiate with me! Do they not know whom they speak to? I gasped and ran behind a nearby pillar away from the voice. The sound of his anger and words frightened every bone in my body, turning me into a frightened child. My lord, please calm yourself. Calm? They're merely testing my resolve. I have more than half of a mind to send my greatest armies to take what should be mine. They are mere insects in the way of my kingdom's expansion. They merely asked for a marriage joining. So I'm to bow to them and share my land that I have so rightfully conquered? <laughs> I peeked from behind the pillar to see a large demon covered in royal clothes, but buff enough to be a military commander. His rage practically emanated. 
Oh, whatever. From Miss Bonnie and Secret at a servant. They are willing to give their land to you, sire. All they ask is for one of your sons to marry their daughter, whom I might add is as beautiful as can be. This is ridiculous! To suggest that I need their approval to take their land is beyond insanity. What makes them think I care about their precious daughter? Oh, so this is the father of all the five. Because they all had different mothers. Did I mention that she is a... Prodigy of our kind, sire. A prodigy? <laughs> He's like, what? Yes, my lord. This succubus is a master of her skills in magic and mind manipulation. She is said to sway armies with a snap of her fingers, despite being as young as she is. Impossible! If only it were, sire. This succubus is dangerous, but would be a great asset to have should we agree to this arrangement. The only reason she cannot phase you, my lord, is because you are the strongest demon in the plains. Is this supposed to change my mind? <laughs> yes, my lord. You are doing a terrible job at convincing me. My apologies, sire. I was lost. I could tell that they were talking about Diana, but why? Father. I quickly turned my head to see another demon who looked like a mere child staring at the throne at the demon commander. Father. Ah, Raystrow, have you finished your training? Yes, Father. Then what do you want? I want to be with my brothers the best of the day, Father. The demon commander walked to the young demon and gripped his hair, picking him up off the ground, forcing him to look up at his snarl. The young demon, however, looked unfazed. Huh. Arrogance! Why should I allow you to be with them? I should kill you for your lack of respect to me. Because I want to be with them, father. I could only stare as the young demon faces his father, despite the massive difference between them. This young demon seemed weaker and easy to kill versus the demon commander. Why would this man kill his son, though? Was this commander that ruthless? However, I wasn't expecting him to laugh and release the young demon. <laughs> Good! Assertive even in the face of danger! That is why you are my favorite son. What? I could only stare wide-eyed as the commander placed his hand on the demon's shoulder. Very well. Go. Tomorrow, you will show me your training. The little demon grinned wily before running off. I have a thought. Yes, my lord? How old is this daughter? As old as your... fifth, sire. The youngest. Do you believe this proposal is worth it? Yes, sire. Tell those insects that they are safe for now. I will consider their offer. Sire, are you certain? Did I stutter? Now go! I'm terribly sad now. Like, a cold breeze has, has went up my back. <sighs> I, I cannot... I don't know if I'm going to cry or not. Because usually when I play visual novel games, I cry. At least the ones on my phone. <laughs> the From Voltage Inc. Yeah, I cry a whole hell lot from those. The demon servant quickly ran off, but as soon as he passed the pillar, I was hiding behind. He, along with the commander, vanished into thin air. What, what the... What had happened? I didn't get the time to try to figure out, figure that out when a demon, who looked around my age, walked into the room reading a book. Is that... Face trial? Your nose is stuck in those books! Will you not lift your head up from them once in a while? Huh? That voice? I circled around the pillar to see a second demon, leaning against another pillar and smirking at Raystro. Aren't you supposed to be with your mother practicing the harpsichord? I am. But I had a feeling that you were in danger. In danger? What are you- ATTACK! All of a sudden, three shadows zipped through the room and slammed to Raystro, forcing him to fall to the ground and drop his book. As the sight cleared for me, there were three other demons in a dog pile with Raystro at the bottom. Get off! No way! You haven't had a break in months from those stupid books! It's time for PUNISHMENT! DEATH BY BROTHERHOOD! No more reading! Sam and Matthew somewhere. I that. told you that you were in danger. Eric. 
I suddenly knew who the who these demons were. It's the boys. Even in the demon world, their brotherly connection was astounding. They were merely younger versions of themselves. One of the demons who I assumed was Matthew grabbed the book from the floor and opened it, reading it mockingly. How can you read this, Race Jero? It's all about war strategy. It's boring. I have to, Zakaru. Get off! There's only one thing you need to know about strategy. Kill them all. Take no prisoners. You sound just like father. <laughs> I can help but giggle. It was good to see them acting childish with each other. Eventually, James managed to push his brothers off of him and stand, brushing himself off. You all are reckless. At least we have fun. It's true. You haven't been with us in weeks. Don't you think it's time for a break? I'm sure father won't mind. But I have to... I know you want to, Raistrao. Oh, Damien. Damn it. I... What is going on here? I shot my head to the voice to see the commander, aged a little, staring at the boys with his arms across his chest. Damien quickly dashed and hid behind Sam, peeking over his shoulder to see the large commander. Nothing is going on. We just passed by each other. Then why does your brother have your book? I was showing him what I was learning, father. Return to your studies, Ray Strau. The rest of you out of my sight. Do not disturb your brother again. I can only stare as James gently took his book, and without looking at his brothers returning to read them, the commander walked past the remaining brothers, growling at Sam and Damien before leaving the room. What's... what was up with that? Don't worry about it. We'll find a way to get him back. I don't know. He's on a very tight leash. Hmm. Ezreal, you're quiet. What did you hear? He's going to a negotiation meeting. He's going to arrange a marriage. A marriage? For who? It must be for one of us. He hasn't decided who will marry her. It's a girl from a kingdom he wants to take over. But that's uncharacteristic of him. Usually he'd just attack with the army. Whatever the case is, one of us is getting married. I hope it isn't me. What about Ray Strau? He's the eldest. It would make sense, but having a succubus marrying one of us means that she'll be practically married to all of us. Well, what should we do? <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Before the conversation could continue, the boys vanished into thin air, fading into different colored mist, replacing them was an older Damien and Matthew sitting with each other in the middle of the throne. Do you think we should? Oh, what the f- You guys look weird. I really want to. Oh, dear. I want to as well. Still, it'll be hard to convince Reistero, since he's the one about to be married, and he's the favorite. We don't know that, Zukeru. Maybe she's set to marry you. Zukeru. No way! I don't want to get married! I don't think you'll have a problem with that baby face of yours. I looked over to see Sam join a duo, crossing his arms and raising an eyebrow at his brothers. What are you two talking about? <laughs> we got into contact with the human world again. Come on, Ezreal. You give humans too much attention. No way! You gotta listen! They apparently have stores and books and schools and stuff! So what? It's full of humans who piss on each other for no reason. They're no better than the devil spawn. Nuh-uh! The one we were talking to wasn't like that! How do you know, Sekeru? Because I do! What is going on here? Wow, he looks pretty hot. They want to go to the Probably human the world. No, not there. <laughs> the human world? Racero, think about it! You won't have to marry that girl and be the heir anymore! You could be with us, and we can make lives for ourselves in the new world! Now you're just talking nonsense! I vote that we do it. Oh, I like his stuff too. Huh? Oh, not you two. Think about it. This may be our chance to finally get away from this political nonsense we're stuck in. We may be nobles, but we're still our own beings. <laughs> Ristrao is in. What? Ezreal! <laughs> Whoa! So how do we get there? Are you kidding me? 
You don't even know how we'd get there. A simple spell should work, but it would require someone from the human world to help us get there. We can ask him! Hmm. This is where I'll be saving. Right here. I honestly don't know what the hell is going on. I guess we're learning how they came into our world and then, like, the story why they were shot and all that. So I guess the game isn't technically over, but it's about to be over for sure. <sighs> for sure, it's gonna about it's about to be over. <laughs> it's so sad. I th I really think Damien was the one that, cause isn't Damien the youngest? Cause he said the the how old the girl was, and the troll said she's a little older than the fifth youngest that the the fifth child which Damien is the youngest so I'm quite sad about that but I hope you guys have enjoyed watching stay beautiful and I guess I'll see you guys next time to figure out what the hell is going on